What's up everybody? Welcome back to Old Volks TV. It is like a thousand degrees outside today. Uh, it is ridiculous. So we thought it'd be a perfect day for talking about cooling, <laughs> cooling your motor. Uh, last time we, last time we met last week, I guess, or whenever you watch this video in order or not in order, uh, we were cleaning up the tins. This is the old 1600 that came out of the bus that we sort of fixed up and then set to the side for an 1835 and the 1835 didn't work out. So we ended up uh, going back to the 1600 uh, because that's what we have and you know, it ran great. And we wanna get Gary's motor out of the bus before uh, the big trip that we're gonna take. Uh, we're going on one of these bus bash deals. So we wanna make sure that we have our motor dialed in and it's gonna be super hot driving out there where we're going, super hot coming back. I wanna make sure that we are nice and cool. Uh, we do have one of Andrig's fans in here, and I'm waiting on the cooling flaps still. Uh, they're taking forever to get here, uh, but I know he shipped them like the same day. It's just, you know, <laughs> just takes time. It's been a few days. So uh, when we get those, we'll go over this part of the cooling with the doghouse and the fan and the flaps and the, the Venturi and all that stuff. But for today, what we're going to do over on this table, uh, we are going to change out our oil pump from the stock oil pump, which is behind that pulley, to an in and out pump. Uh, this happens to be one from Empy, uh, which is pretty good quality. I could not get my hands on a, uh, a CB Performance one, which would be like the step up from this, like a nice billet one. Uh, but these work just fine. You know, we're putting it together on a stock motor. We're not pushing super high pressures. Uh, it is a whole pump brand new with the gear set and a cover and everything and then I added my uh, AN fittings to go to the lines and show you exactly how to do a, a remote oil cooler and filter setup on your motor that is not tapped for full flow. That's what you need this for. You gotta in and out. So we'll get closer. We'll get into a little more detail with that. There we go. The meat of the problem, uh, as they say. But it's a good seal, or it's a good pump nonetheless. I mean, it did pump oil. So, should be okay there. Uh, so we're gonna pull these gears out. They should come. And if you can get a grip on them, they should come right out. Now uh, you have an upper and a lower gear. Uh, the, the lower one just slides on this pin and just turns. The upper one, you know, has the pin attached and it has this tab. And deep down inside that hole is the cam. And the cam has a little slot uh, that this pops into. So when the cam turns, this turns, it turns the other one, it pumps, sucks oil out, pushes oil over here. And, and you know, that's kind of the cycle of life for your oil. Um, this So this was a good pump. We're going to go ahead and hang on to the the pieces we're going to keep those. Um, the next step is you got your puller. Um, I've had to modify mine because it didn't fit but that basically goes into there's these two holes right here where it, you know the oil moves through the pump and you get that in there and that'll grab the pump and then you get this little feller you know, which kind of grabs the case. And I said it earlier, I really don't like this type of pump puller. Um, there's some better ones out there. Because this, you know, you're not really holding on to anything substantial. Before we go to remove that, almost forgot. There's this bolt at the bottom. There's this bolt above the, the pump here. There's this little guy over here. Um, and you know, this maybe this one up here above it just for good measure. We're gonna loosen those. We're not gonna take them off uh, because we don't wanna take them all the way off. But if you just crack them, look, none of these are, this one's not even tight. I bet you none of these are tight. 
That one's a little better. Uh, you just, you know, kind of relieve the pressure. There we go. Um, on that the case there, and that's going to help that pump sort of come out a little easier. You know, like I said, we're not taking them all the way off. We're just cracking them to give that case a little room to expand. You gotta make sure that these ears are touching uh, you know, part of the case evenly. They're not gonna get a whole lot of bite, but you know, down here and then this one grabs up here just a little bit. It's gotta be pretty straight. pretty good there we go all right so there's your oil pump uh, this is just a stock cheapo oil pump I'm gonna put our gears back in there these gears also see that little dot that goes out so you should always be able to see that I don't think that it matters in relation to each other like a timing chain uh, you would want to line those up or something but you know this one it doesn't really matter but there you go when the when the cam turns back here turns your gears just like that uh, so we're gonna save that that's good stuff so now you got it out we got to get these studs out because we're going to be replacing them uh, so we take we we'll put a nut on there Sure you guys know how to do this. This one came out on its own. All right, we got everything all nice and super clean. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the new, uh, the new pump, which is I mean, it's way thicker. There you go, you can see that now. So it's a thicker pump. It's, it's actually got a little bit more pressure to push everything through that, you know, that whole system that we got going on. So again, with the pin down uh, is how you want to put it in there. But we got to put this little gasket on there and we don't have studs to hold it up. So we're going to get our little raspberry jam um, we don't want to get a lot of this inside the motor but it's not a bad you know it's, it's not gonna kill it if a little bit gets in there because uh, Chris tells me this stuff will dissolve with the oil and it'll just be no big deal but we're gonna try to not get a lot in there anyways so we got that I'm gonna put our little Gasket on this one just goes on, you know, as long as the holes are visible, it's good. And then just for just for funsies, let's put a little more. Now you do whatever you want. You want to put this, put it. If you want to put something else, like crazy amounts of orange RTV. I'm not gonna come stop you you know put on there whatever product your old granddad told you to use you use that this stuff works for me it doesn't get hard you know on you it doesn't doesn't get crusty it doesn't ever solidify on there and, and make stuff get stuck so that's why we use that one uh, make sure we can see all our holes again pin down and then oh no try to get that in there as straight as you can because you're not going to have a chance to really move it and then gently and evenly tap it in there it should go right in oh, look at that we got a little movement all right so that guy's in there 
This filter, it's very important, <laughs> filter. this seal gasket is very important as to which way it goes because of the uh, in and out uh, function. The oil's got to get back through there, you know, to go back in there. So when you put it on, you have to make sure that uh, you see that fifth hole. If you put it in like this or over here, you're not going to, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. Uh, we're going to put these in. These don't have the dot, which is weird. Uh, but it's obvious that that one can only go in one way. And this one, uh, I just put it in the way that it came out. I set it down very carefully. Uh, you know, that's that. Uh, we're going to come back and glue this all together. Some guys will put a bunch of grease in there, you know, and prime it up so that you have oil in the system. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I have a pre-startup procedure that I use that I'm going to hand prime the motor. I'm going to turn it over a bunch of times by hand just to get the oil where it needs to be. Um, there is a light coating of oil in there on that stuff, so it's okay. All right, put our this little guy five holes. It's very important because you have holes here. This will be one of them. This will be the other one of them. Now when we put that on. When you're looking at these, one of these is obviously longer than the rest. The reason for that is, you know, you've got different thicknesses of the plate here. That longer one goes on the bottom left corner because that's where uh, one of these oil galleys is. They had to make it a little thicker. So just pay attention when you're putting those on. All right, there we go. Oil pumps on. We got the in and out. Oil can get to the cooler, can get to the filter. You know, we're all set. Uh, so now we can put this thing back together, put the uh, carbs on there, put the starter ring on there, and fire it up and get it all tuned up and get it in the bus. Uh, that's going to be next week. Um, so the next time you see this, it's going to be fully built and put together. You guys have seen me do it a million times. I'm not going to make you watch it again. Uh, but we will go through the tuning process and the priming process, you know, to make sure we get oil into that pump. Uh, we're just going to loop it for now. I'm not going to attach all that stuff to it uh, to fire it off. So we'll just loop it for now so the oil just goes right back in. And then uh, hopefully we can pull that motor out and stab this one in there and, and just start driving the bus. I'm really excited, guys. We're almost there. Uh, check the links down below. Visit all the friends. Get you a shirt. Uh, from that one special link right there wherever those shirts really help us out because it lets us buy Fancy things to bolt onto motors so that you can watch us and learn how to do it um, Check out Volks America and Volks Mania magazine Barnes and Noble man. You can get them there starting uh, in a month or so You should be able to get both of them there uh, Hit that subscribe button. We love seeing where you guys are from hit us in the comments there. We love that too Argentina Sweden Brazil Canada Japan, all over the US. We got people everywhere. We are worldwide. Uh, so hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments if you got any questions about any of this stuff. All this stuff will be linked down below uh, so you can get it for yourself and make your own kit. And uh, thanks for watching.